Of course, you all don't just come to I.O. to hear stats like this. You also come because you get your hands on cool new gadgets. So we're going to give you some. The first is an interesting one. Um, a set of engineers in their 20 percent time surprised all of us with what you can do just with the off-the-shelf cardboard and your smartphone. And the combination takes you into a very, very immersive experience. We're going to hand each and every one of you a cardboard as you walk out from the keynote. And please share your thoughts on, on hashtag cardboard. For much of 2014, virtual reality was the hot topic in technology. In March of 2014, Oculus VR, Palmer Luckey's startup that brought VR back into the spotlight, was acquired by Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook for three billion US dollars. In that same month, Sony announced Project Morpheus, a VR headset that would connect to the PlayStation 4 games console to provide high-quality VR experiences without the need for a powerful personal computer. Valve was also showing VR prototypes during this time, as tech companies across the industry prepared for the birth of a new medium. While Oculus, Sony, and Valve were still developing prototypes and development kits, many were itching to know when virtual reality would be available for the general consumer. In June 2014, Google would step in to provide just that. This is the rise and fall of Google Daydream. Now, we love cardboard, and for us, it represents so much of what we think VR should be about. It should be mobile. It should be approachable. It should be for everyone. Two years before Daydream, Google announced its first VR platform, Google Cardboard. Google Cardboard is a cardboard shell with two lenses that could house a smartphone, using the smartphone's display, chipset, and various sensors. The little cardboard contraption would be transformed into a portable, low-powered virtual reality headset. In a time when VR was not only restricted to development kits and prototypes, but were also varyingly expensive, Google Cardboard stood out as the first for-everyone VR device. Thanks to the smartphone market reaching over 2 billion globally, and the low barrier to entry for cardboard, Almost all modern consumers had a potential virtual reality device in their pockets, and they could achieve that potential with essentially $5 worth of cardboard. The aim of cardboard was not to be the future of VR, of course, that would still require quality materials, but instead, Google would entice developers into making VR content, apps, games, videos, and everything in between. At first, Google Cardboard appeared to be a great success. People all over the world were trying virtual reality for the first time in their own homes. Google Cardboard was not only a product, but a design specification, leading to thousands of brands and companies creating their own low-cost, generic VR headsets for mobile, some of which were designed to be sold as a more functional VR headset made of plastic with a comfortable head strap and built-in headphones, and others used by brands as gimmicky freebies for advertising. But while the smartphone VR craze was booming, there was a severe underlying issue. By designing the cardboard to suit any mobile device, provided it featured the required sensors such as the accelerometer, magnetometer, and gyroscope, it did attempt to function with almost every mobile device. Essentially, there were no minimum or recommended specifications. Minimum specification and recommended specification are a list of system hardware required to run a particular piece of software. 
This allows a user to determine if their hardware is capable of running a specific software before making the purchase. Without these specifications, the implication to the consumer is that this peripheral could and would function with your device, irrelevant of its specification. This meant that if you bought Google Cardboard, you could have a wildly different experience when using two different devices with this same peripheral. While many consumers had immersive, impressive experiences from Google Cardboard, many suffered motion sickness and fatigue, caused by some low-quality devices featuring low-resolution displays and weaker hardware that struggled to provide a solid frame rate for the experiences. This wasn't helped by the plethora of cheaply made cardboard-compatible apps rushed onto digital stores to take advantage of the sudden mobile VR boom many of which were fast-paced, poorly optimized roller coaster experiences, specifically designed to recreate the feeling of G-force by causing slight nausea. Some of these experiences were detrimental to the VR industry, recreating the age-old VR sickness storyline from the 90s era of VR. Oh my god, I, I think I have to take this helmet off. I'm physically feeling the spacer for a second. <laughs> Oh my God. This is our Samsung Gear VR Innovation Edition, powered by Oculus. Thank Rachel. you. For me, where am I going? Where are you taking Take me? Seat, please have a seat. Okay, safety first. Later this same year, in September 2014, Samsung announced the Gear VR. Gear VR was a collaboration between Samsung and Oculus to create a high quality headset that would house a Samsung Galaxy Note 4. Unlike Google Cardboard, Gear VR was made of high-quality plastic, with comfortable face foam and a three-way head strap to comfortably wear for longer periods of time. By limiting the device to the Galaxy Note 4, and later the Galaxy S line from the 6 onwards, every Gear VR user would be using a 2560 by 1440 pixel AMOLED display with state-of-the-art chipsets from each said device generation. This, coupled with Oculus's VR technical prowess, the Gear VR was a high-quality mobile VR headset that would often forego the nausea risk of using lower-end smartphones. Gear VR went on to be a big success, thanks to both individual sales and smartphone bundles offering the devices a free add-on for compatible smartphones. This success led Google to look back at their own smartphone VR strategy and create their own more high-end experience. In May of 2016, Google announced that this had materialized as Google Daydream. Now, what we've built won't be available until this fall, but we'd like to introduce you to it today. We call it Daydream. Daydream, much like Gear VR, was designed to serve as its own platform. The headset was made of a comfortable cloth material and utilized an NFC chip to communicate with the phone and automatically start the Daydream software. The real innovation, however, was the three degrees of freedom controller bundled with the device. Three degrees of freedom refers to tracking taken from a solid point. You can turn, twist, and look around. Where the Gear VR used a touchpad located on the side of the device, the Daydream would allow you to use simple pointer controls with this comfortable controller, which featured a clickable touchpad, an app button with different functions for different titles, and a home button to return to the Daydream dashboard. This made the mobile VR experience infinitely more comfortable for long-term use. Though the Daydream platform used the Google Play Store-like cardboard, it featured its own curated section, featuring Daydream-specific games and even some exclusives, such as Need for Speed No Limits VR. The Google Daydream View launched on November 10, 2016 for $79 US dollars to generally favorable reviews. 
outlets praised the Daydream soft cloth design, the useful 3DOF controller, and the inexpensive price, but were critical of the Google Pixel being the one and only Daydream ready device at the time, and the severe lack of content at launch, as it wasn't until 2017 that Google would open up the Daydream program to all third party developers. Through 2016 and 2017, Google Daydream continued to provide fun, easy to use VR experiences like Res Infinite and Eclipse Edge of Light. And more smartphones released under the Daydream Ready moniker, such as the Motorola Moto Z, Asus Zenfone AR, and Huawei Mate 9 Pro. There were even those who believed Google Daydream could outperform Samsung's Gear VR in 2017, and in August of that same year, those believers were treated to a surprise at Google I.O. 2017. I'm excited to announce that the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus will add Daydream support this summer with a software update. Despite Samsung having their own first-party VR device in the Gear VR, they had decided to partner with Google to make their latest flagship smartphone compatible with the Daydream. This move signaled that Daydream was the future of mobile VR, but later at this same I.O. conference, it would be clear that Daydream as a platform was the future, rather than the current Daydream view itself. Well, I'm excited to announce that an entirely new kind of VR device is coming to Daydream, what we call standalone VR headsets, and we're working with partners to make them. Google announced a partnership with Lenovo and HTC Vive to develop two of the world's first standalone VR headsets. The Lenovo Mirage Solo and unnamed standalone Vive. These headsets would not require a smartphone, PC, or any other device. And better yet, Google announced WorldSense, a new technology using two cameras that allowed daydream-powered headsets to operate in six degrees of freedom, just like their PC counterparts, the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. It is worth noting that Oculus had shown off a similar technology the year prior during Oculus Connect 3 in 2016 with Project Santa Cruz. But Google was actively bringing the technology to the market rather than just prototyping. Speaking of the HTC Vive, one of the surprise announcements was the first ever HTC Vive standalone headset, which would be powered by the Daydream platform but only a silhouette of the headset's design was shown. In 2017, all was looking up for Google's Daydream platform. Google were partnering with Daydream's biggest competitor to allow support for their platform. They were ushering in a new era of standalone virtual reality sooner than we had expected, and more apps and games were being released for the platform. But as 2017 progressed into 2018, things started to look bad for the future of Daydream. HTC soon announced that their Daydream-powered headset would no longer be. Instead, they would develop their own standalone headset, the Vive Focus, powered by their own Vive port platform. Smartphone support was ramping down through 2018, as Motorola and Samsung remained the only third party still developing Daydream-ready phones which itself ended when the Samsung Galaxy devices dropped Daydream support with the S10 onwards. In late 2017, Oculus announced the Oculus Go standalone headset, which was essentially a standalone version of the Gear VR, requiring no smartphone but sharing much of the device's library. The Oculus Go was set to launch in spring 2018 for $199 the same time frame as the $399 Lenovo Mirage Solo. Though the Oculus Go only supported three degrees of freedom tracking, it was half the price of the Mirage Solo and launched with over 1,000 apps thanks to its compatibility with the majority of the four-year Gear VR library. 2018 was quiet for Google Daydream. 
with its only official mention being at the Google Pixel 3 reveal, where it was confirmed the smartphone would support the current Daydream platform. But as time went on, word of Daydream came to a stop, until the next big Google Pixel announcement. Google's next smartphone, the budget-friendly Pixel 3a, would not support Daydream. While some have speculated it could be due to the budget hardware, many have pointed out that the Pixel 3a is a more capable device than the original Pixel, which is still Daydream ready. Then, at Google I.O. 2019, not a single mention of Daydream. Google appears to have given up on its Daydream platform, likely due to two factors. First of all, Google has spent the last few years focused on augmented reality and has entered a heated battle with Apple, with Google's AR Core taking on Apple's AR Kit. Second of all, mobile VR is already becoming a remnant of the past. Samsung continues to support Gear VR, but has provided no important updates since 2017. Standalone VR has taken its place as the affordable form of VR, with devices like the Oculus Go, Oculus Quest, and HTC Vive Focus Plus satisfying our wireless VR needs without taking our smartphones. With Daydream likely now behind us, it's easy to see Google's impact on VR even today. Daydream pushed the three degrees of freedom controller to mobile VR, later inspiring the Gear VR controller and, by extension, the Oculus Go controller, the push to bring standalone headsets like the Lenovo Mirage Solo to retail, bringing with it the Oculus Go and the six degrees of freedom Oculus Quest. But most importantly, is Google's first VR platform, a platform that is still vibrant, if not controversial to this day. Google Cardboard started the wave of smartphone-powered VR headsets, and searching VR on any online store is likely to yield hundreds or even thousands of various smartphone-powered VR headset shells created thanks to Google Cardboard. And though Cardboard has in some ways muddied the perception of VR as a technology, it's impossible to deny that Google is responsible for bringing virtual reality to millions of people around the world.